public and members of the press. My name is Robert Notoff and I'm a researcher and policy analyst with the Center on Policy Initiatives. And for those of you who don't know, the Center on Policy Initiatives is a research and action nonprofit organization dedicated to improving economic equity for San Diego's workers. Um, we're constantly looking at ways to improve working conditions for San Diego's residents. And last year we were fortunate enough to make contact with the Institute for Women's Policy Research, who is a leading national organization when it comes to the issue of earned sick leave. Uh, when we connected with them, we asked them if they'd be willing to do a report on earned sick leave in San Diego, as uh, we really want to make sure that San Diego is riding the national wave in terms of uh, the issue of earned sick leave and providing access for everyday uh, residents. Um, the purpose of today's press conference is twofold. One is to cover the data and all the numbers that are in that report, right? But number two, and most importantly, is to really put a human face to what all of that data and all of those numbers, what that really means for San Diegans uh, today. Um, so the reason why this is important is it's safe to assume that everybody here and every worker in San Diego is at some point in their career going to get sick, right? Um, and having access to earned sick leave actually affords those people the opportunity to stay home, take care of themselves, and come back to work when they're actually healthy and, and productive. Uh, access to earned sick leave um, creates stronger and safer work environments. It supports children and families by creating a stronger work and family balance. And it's good for the overall economy. Um, but sadly, what, what today's report, uh, the findings from today's report tell us is that nearly half of San Diego's uh, private, private workforce lack access to, to earn sick leave. And so what that means is you have everyday residents in San Diego who are forced to make the impossible decision, the po impossible choice of whether or not they go to work sick or stay home and get doctor days paid, right? Or stay home and take care of a sick child or, or a loved one and possibly lose that day's pay, which could be the difference between paying uh, their bills at the end of the month or not. Um, this issue is also across all industries, right? All industries are impacted, but a particular note are that three out of four childcare workers lack access to earned sick leave, and four out of five uh, workers in the food service industry lack access to earned sick leave. So those are the very people who you who, uh, take care of your child when you drop them off to go to work or have a night on the town, and those are the very people who are handling your food when you're going out for your night on the town. And we obviously don't want them to be sick. San Diego can do a lot better, right? Um, I obviously could go on and on and on about the findings in the report, but you're not all here to hear me talk and recite that to you. Rather, you're all here to really get the uh, human element to what's taking place here, right? And really to understand what that data really means. And so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Henoveva. Hola, mi nombre es Genoveva. Trabajo un tiempo. Trabajé un tiempo para un hotel San Diego. Mi trabajo era muy pesado, estaba responsable o era responsable por, do, por 12 cuartos hasta 15, lo que, tendría que, lo que significaba tender cama, mover colchones pesados, limpio, limpiar tinas, excusados, estufas, refrigeradores, subir y bajar de escaleras con, con carga, con mucha... Para, porque no había elevador. Entonces era mucho, mucho, muy pesado. Con el paso del tiempo, las demandas físicas del trabajo afectaron mi salud. Como resultado me enfermé y empecé a tener mucho, mucho dolor en mis rodillas, en mi espalda. Desafortunadamente no, no tenía acceso a tiempo de enfermedad. No pude faltar un día de trabajo porque no podía perder un sueldo. Tenía que trabajar y con dolor, con mucho, mucho dolor, Por ese motivo no pude ser tan, tan productiva en el trabajo. Mi salud empeoró y empeoró. Con el, con el paso del tiempo me dieron menos horas porque no era tan productiva y no pude trabajar ya tanto como antes. Me encontraron, me cortaron con horas de mi trabajo y así estuve sucesivamente hasta que Definitivamente no pude trabajar. Si hubiera tenido un poco de descanso, hubiera seguido trabajando hasta ahora mismo. Gracias. I'm going to translate. Hi, my name is Genoveva Boreal. I worked for a couple of years at a hotel in San Diego. My workload was very heavy. 
I was responsible for cleaning 12 rooms a day, which involved making the bed, lifting heavy mattresses, scrubbing tubs, toilets, ovens, and carrying the materials and cleaning cart up and down stairs as the hotel did not have an elevator. Over time, the physical demands of the job took a toll on my body, and as a result, I got sick and started having pain in my knees and back. Unfortunately, I did not have access to earn sick leave and couldn't miss a day of work because I couldn't afford to lose that pay. So I would go to work in a lot of pain, and as a result, I was not able to be as productive. My health got worse and worse over time, and I got less and less hours because I was not as productive and not able to do as much work as before. My hours were cut since my body could not rest and recuperate from the physical demands. If I had been able to take a few days off, I would have been a healthy and productive worker, working right now. So next will be uh, Rosa. Hi, my name is Rosa Lopez. For over 14 years, I have worked in cleaning office building at night in San Diego. I feel lucky to have here six days at my job. When my kids were younger and got sick, I knew I could call my work and stay home with them. I didn't have to worry about who will take care of them or if they won't get sicker. I feel confident that I won't lose a day of my salary if I stay home to take care of my family or my own well health. When you earn very little, missing a day of work makes a hard difference. You can pay your bills and don't have enough to pay for all of your basic needs. I didn't have earned sick days in my previous job, and I could afford to miss a day of work to take care, take care of my kids. I worry about my kids, kids, and I will go to work sick and risk, risk getting other sick. Now I feel confident that I can take care of myself and the health of my family without losing my job. I think it's important everyone has these benefits. Thank you. Next up will be Justin. So we had more workers who wanted to come and speak today, but unfortunately, Many of them didn't feel they could for fear of retaliation from uh, their employers. Um, my name is Justin. I, my name is Justin. Can you guys all hear me? My name is Justin. Um, I work for a small legal nonprofit providing services to employees. And in my work, I see that uh, sick leave or the lack of sick leave makes big impacts in people's lives. I see workers retaliated against all the time for not being able to come to work because they're ill. You know, recently, I saw a worker get fired when she couldn't uh, go to work because she had the flu. So having sick leave and particularly having paid sick leave allows someone to afford to take time off and this is very important because if they don't then essentially they're either forced to lose their work, lose their job, disrupting their lives or go to work uh, ill, potentially getting fellow workers and members of the public uh, sick. Thank you. Next up will be Jen. Hi, I'm Jennifer Riggs. I'm a member of the California Nurses Association, a registered nurse at UCSD Medical Center. As a nurse, I see this as a huge problem. If people can't stay home when they're sick, that's, that's not good. Um, this creates a problem because people go to sick, go to work sick, and they, they could increase the risk of spreading disease, illness, the flu. I've seen people die because they contracted the flu from someone or somewhere. And I mean, it's just terrible, terrible consequences of not allowing people to earn sick leave so that they can stay home and recover from their sick. 
we need to put in place policies. We need to raise the bar in San Diego. This is America's finest city. We need to live up to that. To not allow people to stay home, to take care of their children when their children are sick. That's not okay. Next up is Scott. My name is Scott Mullen. I'm a teacher at the Language Academy within uh, San Diego Unified School District. So I'm here to let you know what it looks like when uh, adults are not allowed to uh, leave work when their children are sick. Uh, I'll have several a year or more uh, coming to come to my classroom. They might have a fever, chills, stomach aches. I can tell that they're suffering. Uh, I do send them to the nurse. Uh, and then sometimes they get sent back or they might end up staying with the nurse for a while. I've even talked to the nurse at our school and she says that she'll call the parents to find out, uh, can you come and get your child? They're, they're very sick, very ill, feeling terrible. They can't, uh, can't stay in the classroom and concentrate on what they're supposed to be concentrating on. Well, the parent's response is that I, I can't take a day off of work. Uh, the nurse also has told me that she, she'll ask the kids why they came into the school in the first place same reason. My, my parents can't take a day off of work. So, and, and, and really what's sad about this is that these are kids that should be with someone who loves them, someone who cares about them. They're, in a, in a, they're, they're suffering. They're, they're going through some pain and they need to be getting some individual attention. So this report obviously indicates that here in San Diego at this time we don't, we don't value the children the way that we should. Uh, in our school we hear all the time that it's all about the kids. Well, I wonder about that when, when parents are not allowed to go home and take care of their own children when they're sick. So that's all I have to share. And our final speaker will be Ken Jacobs. Thank you. I'm Ken Jacobs. I'm the chair of the UC Berkeley Center for Labor Research and Education and co-editor of the recent book, Wind Mandates Work, Raising Labor Standards at the Local Level. In November 2006, San Francisco became the first city in the United States to pass an earned sick leave law. Workers in San Francisco can use the time for their own health needs or to care for a family member. Since that time, laws have been passed in New York City, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, D.C., Newark, New Jersey, and Jersey City, and the state of Connecticut. So what do we know about the evidence from what's happened when these laws have been passed? A survey of employers done two years after the law went into effect in San Francisco found that 70% of the firms were supportive or very supportive of the law. In fact, the head of the restaurant association who had opposed the law in the beginning said afterwards, well, it turned out it really wasn't a big deal. But it turned out to be a big deal for workers who got sick leave. Uh, estimated 54,000 workers gained new access to earn sick leave, while one in five firms improved their existing policies. One of the issues that came up in San Francisco prior to the law was a concern about cost and how much workers would use leave time available to them. And researchers found that people really do use earned sick leave days like insurance. Only a quarter of the leave of days available to workers were actually used. A third of the workers used no sick leave in the previous 12 months, and the median worker used two days. Before San Francisco passed its earned sick leave ordinance, it also passed a higher minimum wage law. It's now 1074 an hour. And together, these two laws have increased workers' economic security without hurting overall employment or employment in the restaurant industry. In fact, in the 10 years since the minimum wage law was first passed and the seven years since the sick leave law was put into effect, restaurant employment growth in San Francisco has outstripped that in neighboring counties. Turnover in restaurants is down. Uh, Employers have reported a higher employee morale in their restaurants, and higher, wage, uh, higher wages and access to earned sick leave can help break workers' cycle of losing jobs due to short-term crises, such as when a child is sick or a, a car breaks down. So the evidence is really strong that the earned sick leave laws work for workers, and they work for employers. Thanks. Thank you so much. So just to recap, one, I'd like to thank all of our speakers for coming out and speaking on this important issue. Again, um, we heard from somebody who doesn't have earned sick leave and the impact that it had on her life, right? We heard uh, from a, a worker who who didn't, who used to not have earned sick leave, gained access to it and the improvement that it made in her life. We heard from an attorney who went through the, the personal stories of his clients and the impact that not having earned sick leave had on their life. 
uh, we heard from a public health official, a registered nurse, and the, the impacts that it has. Uh, we heard from a teacher and the impact that it has on children and families. And then we've heard from a leading expert uh, from the UC Berkeley Labor Center in terms of what we can do, the vision in terms of what San Diego could do if we try to follow in the footsteps of San Francisco and other cities that have similar laws on the books. Um, again, just to recap, in San Diego, 44%, or nearly half of San Diego's private workforce lacks access to earned sick leave, and even more disproportionately so, 55% of Latinos lack that. And again, we want to be the kind of city where we force people to have it, you know, they, uh, force people to make the impossible uh, decision on whether or not they go to work sick or whether or not they stay home, take care of themselves, or take care of a loved one to get doctor days pay. And so with that, um, you know, it's a question. We, we think that that's an issue. We need to solve this problem. And I'd like to open it up to any questions from uh, the public or press. Taking a position on the bill uh, that the Assemblywoman uh, Gonzalez has introduced, uh, I think it's about a similar topic. Right. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Assemblywoman uh, Lorena Gonzalez introduced a uh, bill for a statewide uh, proposal. And we think that's a, a step in the right direction. Um, however, this report highlights it's strictly about San Diego, right? This is strictly about uh, what the uh, access rates for earned sick leave are here locally in, this, in the city, and I think that it's really just some great data to really kind of, as we develop a, you know, uh, solutions moving forward, uh, what we should really be uh, focusing on and addressing. Yeah, hi, Rob Priscilla Sohn, uh, Corcom Consulting in San Diego, and Corcom in Centralista. I'm all for paid sick leave for employees. I would like to see more than just two days. I'm just getting over a flu type of thing and it took about a week. So I would like to see more paid sick leave. I've, I'm, my opinion, a healthier, Workforce is a happier workforce, more productive, like the man with the in San Francisco. Right. Yeah, that's right. And studies do show that um, earned sick leave is beneficial for both uh, the employee and the employer. Uh, when employees are able to uh, have access to earned sick leave, they're able to go home when they are sick and not go to work when they're half productive and ill. Rather, they're able to go home, recover, and come back when they're fully productive, fully healthy, and able to produce more. And when workers have uh, or people have access to earned sick leave. It reduces rates of turnover, which is actually cost savings for a number of businesses. So we see this as win-win. Um, and then just to accentuate the, uh, the gentleman's point here is, uh, you know, when, pe when people do have access to earned sick leave, on average, whether they have five days or seven days or nine days, they use three out of the year when they actually do become ill, if they use them at all. So it's not something that people actually take and abuse. It's rather uh, a fundamental work standard. So with that, I'd like to just wrap it up and thank everybody for coming out, and thank you very much.